Hey everyone, Andrew with Andrew's Air Cool Technology. Uh, wanted to do a, at least a two-part series deep dive into the engineering behind the Evolution 2 cooling system. So, uh, first part here, we're just going to talk about the fan shroud. So we're going to talk first about kind of the bottom design of this. So we see this kind of unique picture here. Um, this is partly designed in the curvatures that it is for the airflow. Uh, as the fan is spinning in here um, for each side but this high part right here is for the oil cooler block off so it'll clear the oil cooler block off that comes in the kit that is kind of low profile but it's also high enough to clear if you wanted to substitute one that had oil lines that that come out and in to, to maintain using that for an external oil cooler, you can, it should clear one of the upright style ones that you can get other places. Um, I'm not currently producing one of those. If there's enough demand for that kind of thing, um, I might do it. But um, I tend to prefer use using the full flow oil system to begin with to do your uh, uh, external oil cooler versus putting lines out the top of the engine because uh, then you've got a ductum out of your engine bay, etc. You know, and so that takes quite a bit of sheet metal work. So it's easier to do external oil cooler lines via your full flow system. So, so that's why it is the way it is. But it is there in case you want to do that. So you can do that. Um, so that's kind of the bottom. The other thing about the bottom is it's fully enclosed. Um, so no radiant heat from the top of your crankcase is going to enter into your cooling system. And uh, of course, it will hit this underlying, you know, part of the sheet metal and, and heat it up. But um, but generally speaking, this is steel. Uh, steel doesn't have the greatest uh, thermal conductivity, so you don't really have to worry about that very much. And of course, it's pulling in the air uh, and, and and keeping the internals cool anyway. So in general, that's you know under it's the underneath is enclosed, uh, unlike some aftermarket fan shrouds like fiberglass ones that tend to just be a big tent over the whole engine and they don't really have anything that that shields that radiant heat from coming into the cooling system so um, so we don't do that we don't have that open uh, the other thing about that this bottom piece is that it's designed to clear not just the top of the crankcase for magnesium cases but the aluminum cases as well so I went to great pains to install this both on, my test engine actually has an aluminum case and it clears that uh, with plenty of space. And of course it clear, you know, if you clear that, you'll also clear the magnesium case, but I also test fit it on, ma on a magnesium case. So that's, uh, you know, kind of the, the, what looks like odd shape bottom, uh, why it is kind of the way it is. So um, Let's talk next, just dimensions, just generally dimensions, okay? So the width of this fan shroud from, you know, where the screws for the tin go in uh, to the other side is exactly what an OEM doghouse fan shroud is. Um, there's no difference whatsoever. Um, certain aftermarket fan shrouds, particularly uh, aftermarket doghouse 36 horsepower style, Fan shrouds um, by all the vendors are actually too narrow, um, and that really kind of hurts your the performance of your cooling because that narrowness actually cuts off uh, flow to part of the the outermost part of the cylinder head. So you don't want that. Um, so why they're too narrow, I don't know. I did a, a multi-part series on uh, fan shrouds other than mine. Um, uh, a while ago and you can look at those for all the gory details of kind of how they are um, but they are too narrow so not really sure why um, so it is exactly it so it'll just fit you know with your cylinder tin just beautifully no problem at all and uh, you know it'll fit uh, well so and it'll fit both aluminum and magnesium cases with no difference whatsoever in terms of how it fits um, so that's that. Now, um, the other thing, the next thing to really talk about is, um, dimensionally anyway, is the fan inlet on, on this side. Uh, this is larger than stock. Um, 
And the reason for that, um, stock OEM doghouse fan shrouds are 148.3 millimeters inlet diameter across. Um, the early VWs are 150 millimeters. Not really sure why they shrunk it a little bit on the doghouse, but since they were after improved cooling, more cooling, and actually having a larger inlet creates less restriction and provides the ability for more airflow. So not really sure why it shrunk, but uh, again, aftermarket doghouse 36 horsepower uh, fan shrouds are about a millimeter smaller than that. Um, and you can see those details in that other video. And uh, I'm not really sure why they got them smaller, but they are smaller, and uh, which affects airflow by about 2.3% in my measurements. Uh, in other words, reduces it. So that one millimeter diameter actually makes a, a statistically significant difference in the cooling capacity of the fan shroud. So we don't want to do that. We have a larger one than uh, OEM, and a couple of reasons for that. Um, on OEM fan shrouds, the way the engineers designed it, the fan shroud itself, the inlet itself has structure both inside and, of course, outside that help it act like a velocity stack to improve the airflow. That's wonderful. I don't, you know, no problem with that at all. You know, design-wise, it's great. Um, and uh, uh, I thought about that kind of thing with this. But to keep the manufacturing simple, these are just laser-cut sheet metal parts that I weld together. Um, to keep it really simple, I decided to, instead of optimizing the fan shroud as much, I would optimize the fan more to over, you know, to offset the fact that the structure in the fan shroud uh, doesn't provide those um, uh, uh, air velocity improvements. So, um, so that makes this simpler to manufacture, simpler for me to do, but it also has a second benefit, which is um, it makes the internal structure that takes up space for where the fan is, it disappears. So the fan itself has more room, can be bigger, bigger fans can move more air. So. So I chose to move the complexity of the airflow optimization to the fan itself. And part two of this video series, it'll just be a two-part series, we'll talk about the fan and how, the, how I optimize that. And of course, it's dual inlet for this. Um, but this fan shroud, as it is right now, um, using an OEM fan with the, with the stock backing plate, will flow 47% more air than the doghouse fan shroud. So that's a huge difference, right? So I'm just making this inlet bigger, reducing that air restriction, making the restrictions inside less also uh, you know, helps to increase the airflow. And that's the second real major engineering part of this is the air veins inside. You can see those two right there. You can kind of see at the top there, we'll kind of point to it. That's kind of that's what I call the splitter. It's kind of split. It's it's the part that kind of you know divides the airflow this way and that way. And you'll notice it's not in the center because <laughs> if it's in the center, it won't really work properly to balance the airflow. And you can see, hopefully, you can see those on the other side. This is the three four side. It has a lot more air veins. So on this, you can only see there's only the there's only the two on the one two cylinder side. On this, there is, there is uh, besides the splitter, there's four extra ones. Uh, so there's six air veins on that side in total. You can see the other two right there. Um, and uh, that was uh, interesting to design because what I learned through many, many experiments on airflow with fan shrouds, and, and I did a bunch of different prototypes, uh, probably 50 you know, different prototypes, um, that it's not really the offset of the fan to the one two cylinder side that causes more air to want to go to the one two cylinder side it's actually the fact that this the fan spins clockwise and in the direction the fan spins that's where most of the air wants to go it wants to swirl inside once it's inside a, a, an enclosure like this it wants to swirl in the direction that the fan is turning, which makes a lot of sense when you kind of think about it. Um, so because of that and the offset, that makes designing these air veins actually quite complicated to get the airflow balanced. 
but that's what we've ended up with. And in my measurements, um, we're essentially, you know, near dead on uh, airflow side to side, one, two cylinder side versus three, four cylinder side, even. Um, so probably less, less than 0.2% difference between the two. So it's really, really small difference because you're never going to get it perfect. I mean, well, maybe you could. I mean, you could, you know, by some stroke of luck, maybe you could get it perfect. But um, it's really, really close. And, and I think you guys would be really happy with that. So that's, so that is the really design of the air veins and why they look the way they look and why, like, this centerpiece is actually like here and not like right in, you know, right in the middle of the center top of the fan. It has to be offset some because um, we want to redirect the air that wants to go this direction back this direction. So there's air vein, air vein, air vein. So there, there's a lot more complexity on this side to get the air coming this direction when it wants to go that direction. So, um, so that's you know the air veins internal. So you can be assured you're going to get balanced cooling from side to side of your engine. It's, it'll be beautiful. The other thing about the design of these is... This is designed so that 65% of the airflow goes to the cylinder heads, 35% goes to uh, the cylinders. This is roughly what um, uh, Volkswagen did on the doghouse fan shroud uh, in terms of you know airflow, and they got about 10, but they got 10% or so going to the doghouse itself for the oil cooler. We don't have that, uh, so we we took that 10% and we moved that to the cylinder heads. So roughly, you'd be like 10%, uh, 55%, and 35% split between oil cooler, cylinder heads, and cylinders uh, on an OEM doghouse fan shroud. This is takes that 10% and sticks it right to the cylinder head uh, where you need, which is really the most cooling you need, especially a high performance engine. Your cylinder heads are gonna be where you really want most of the cooling. So that's what we've done there. Uh, engineering wise, design wise, and um, so you get balanced airflow and you get a good, the right amount of airflow to your heads and the right amount of airflow to your cylinders, keep your engine cool. And keep it evenly cool side to side, you won't get unusual stresses side to side of your engine because one side is expanding more than the other, uh, that kind of thing. So um, you don't want that. In fact, early VW fan shrouds absolutely because they had the oil cooler just upright in the center of the fan shroud they really couldn't put proper air veins in there to um, to keep the airflow balanced so early VW fan shrouds absolutely having a balance problem and uh, a, a large larger percentage of the air goes to the one two cylinder side than the three four cylinder side so the three four cylinder side gets double whammy in the early fan shrouds because the oil coolers in there preheating the air and it's getting less air on top of it. So you got two things that are causing the three, four cylinder side to run hotter than the one, two cylinder side. We don't want that. So, and that was another reason I didn't, a lot, some people have asked, you know, how come no dog house, et cetera. Well, that's pretty complex uh, design as you can just, if you just look inside an OEM dog house fan shroud, it's very complex in there to get air to the doghouse, right? Um, so, in manufacturing wise, it becomes complicated. Um, so, I just decided to keep it simple, use an external oil cooler. Uh, final note, uh, obviously no uh, thermostat flaps can be in here for a thermostatic control. With an external oil cooler, what you want really uh, for engine warm-up is your oil temperature to come up. That's really the most critical part of the engine to get up to temperature uh, or the or the system because it's not part of the engine obviously. The lubrication getting up to temp. If your lubrication gets up to temp your your engine is going to be fine. And the reason for that is um, condensation gets in your engine. Uh, in the more humid place that you live uh, the more condensation you're going to get in your oil. Now oil and water doesn't mix but, the, but, but water will interact with things in the oil and create acid formation. So if you don't get your oil temperature up, you get acid formation and now you're running as part of your lubricant an acid. It's not good, right, for your engine, right? So that's the big thing. So when you go to external 
oil cooler system through full flow, put an oil thermostat in those lines. Get your oil temp to come up quickly, it'll stay cool, not have to worry about it overheating, but the faster it gets up to temp, the longer lasting your engine uh, will be. So, so that's really the, the key there, and uh, another, just eliminate another complex system from this to keep it simple, that helps keep the price down, uh, helps keep the manufacturing price down, all the component prices uh, are down, and we just move the, you know, the issue to another component, an oil thermostat, uh, which are readily available um, through a bunch of different vendors. They all work really, really well. I have one on a Baja Bug with a 2110cc engine. The oil temp comes up really quickly to the oil temp uh, of the thermostat, and then it stays cool. Uh, it doesn't just keep climbing, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, just get your oil temp up and you'll be good. So this is the Evolution 2 fan shroud and the deep dive, technical deep dive into that. I obviously didn't give you every single aspect of you know uh, what's going on here. In fact, maybe one final note. The air vanes are very simple sheet metal uh, curved in here. Um, Unlike what Volkswagen did again, they 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 have shapes in their air vanes that are that are like airfoils, which help accelerate the air. So again, I went to a simpler approach with the fan shroud, and with that, optimized the fan more. So you get the airflow from the fan, not from the structure of the fan shroud. So that's the other final note on this and why it is the way it is to keep it very simple to manufacture, very easy to make, um, so that I can make these guys for you. So appreciate your time. Um, hopefully that answers uh, a lot of the questions about this fan shroud. And uh, stay tuned for part two, which will talk about the fan. Thanks. Bye-bye.